I still don't know how to do intros, so we'll just get right into it, I suppose. Um, little preface, actually, ooh. Um, maybe a little bit of clickbait title, because not all of these are 1920s, ooh. Some of them are a little bit before, some of them are a little bit after, but most of them are within that range of flappers would go dancing with these, you know? But yes, dance compacts. Women back in the day would take them out when they went dancing. Because, you know, while you're out dancing about, I guess you get sweaty and gotta reapply your makeup, so they would have little compacts, such as this one, that contained usually more than one or two products. And it's everything a lady would need in a night out. Some of them even had space for money, you know, so you didn't need a man. You know, when you just needed a dime to have a great time. Anyway, moving on. This compact, so shiny, so beautiful. This one is actually 1920s. Some of them are not, but alas, they have the same style, so I'm including them anyway. But look at that. It's got a tiny little mirror. Got the rouge in here, it's kind of falling back behind in the gap. But the, the powder puff is embroidered. Look at that. Looks kind of gross in there, but you know. <laughs> it's a hundred years old. I would also look pretty gross on the inside after a hundred years. Moving on to yet another. Very similar in design, you know. Silver, enamel, roses. But this one's a lot bigger and has a, a fabric strap as opposed to a little metal ring. Look at the sides. This is a newer acquisition. New to the family. Oh, I did it upside down again. Jeez Louise. Anyway, there's a compartment for cigarettes or cash. Whatever you so choose. A flapper would most likely have cigarettes, I would imagine. But it's got the powder. The rouge and the itty bitty little lipstick, if I can get the right angle. Here she is. And it even twizzles up still. Oh, it looks so gross up close. Oh, my nails look so gross up close. I'm so sorry. What have I done to you? YouTube, don't hate me. Moving on to another one that was recently acquired. Oh, reflective. powder, and the rouge yet again, and this one, I was really excited when I found it, because it looks very similar to another one I have. This one, that I have in what I can only assume is the original box, with a little hanky, but this one has a little note inside, I'll get to that, but first I gotta show you how similar these are. Look at that, they're twinsies. Even the insides are remarkably similar. Open her up. This one was never used. Has the rouge sealed behind the mirror. Little sheet. Little puff with a sifter. And I must show you the note. I bought this from the son of the original owner. It says, Eunice Fiddler, high school graduation, 1929, from Louis Knoll. <sighs> How sweet. Apparently it was given to his mother by her high school boyfriend. They did not end up together, so he felt a little weird, you know, keeping a gift from his mama's ex. But I thought it was pretty cool, so I bought it. <laughs> Moving on to another somewhat recent find. This one's more of a purse style. This one has a very beautiful blue on it. Little glass piece, I can only assume it's glass. it up. No mirror, but rouge would go there, lipstick would go here, little sifter for your face powder. How lovely. This one I found at a flea market in a box full of old pocket watches. Oh, she's beautimous. Gotta open. There we go. There's the gross little powder puff. Please come out. Please come out. Yeah, so powder would be in there. And then we got 
the rouge spot behind the mirror. Hello. Ta-da! Moving on to yet another compact. Oh my gosh, it's almost like that's the subject of this video. Little enamel. I love the colors. Please open, thank you. So, there's where Rouge would go. Then we got the powder. Fun, fun. I went to a antique mall that I always shop at. Walk in, Lay's like, did you see this compact? I know you like compacts. And then I had to buy it, so that's that one. <laughs> and this one. Tee. It's missing what I can only assume is supposed to be a lipstick attached to this other chain. But, ugh. She's beautiful, miss. A little tassel. She, watch out. Puff, no, return to me. It's the puff. It's a mirror. It's been cracked, but whatever. This one's just silver with little letters engraved. Got the chain. Powder. And rouge. And a lippy stick. How beautiful, miss. I love it. Oh, I don't know if you can read that. Please focus. Cooperate with me. There you go. Sterling Silver. Patent February 1224. I can only assume this 1924. So this is exactly 100 years old. How delightful. This one is actually missing the chain. You can see the loops where it would be attached. But she's cute regardless. Missing the mirror. Powder. Rouge. Very cute. This one, the chain is also broken, but I love her regardless. See, it just sort of like ends. There's nothing attached to it, but I love her. Powder in there. Mirror. Come back. Ah, come on. Ah. Rouge. And the latch is kind of jankety, but builds character. She. Love her. Got the little strap. The flowers. The painted chain mail. She is beauty, she is grace. Powder. You lift up the powder. And it's a coin purse. And then you, where's the latch? You open this up. Rouge in a mirror. It's got a little maker's mark up in there. Please cooperate with me for once in your life. But, sterling top. Very pretty, I love it so much. Boom, another one. Pretty plain, pretty simple. Powder. The rouge and the mirror. Try not to blind y'all with that. Get in there. Get in there without breaking, preferably. Thank you. Moving on to another one. Why are you so dusty? It's almost like I don't dust enough. Little tassel, little train. Very pretty, pretty. It is uh, kind of gutted, but um, I love her anyway. That's upside down. Anyway, behold, a square. This one, uh, the mirror is broken. Just kind of in there. But rouge would go in the middle there, and then you'd spin this to get the powder out. 
very neato neato. Maybe one day I'll learn how to fix glass, but until then, it will remain broken. This one. This is another special one. Not that I don't love them all, but I love this one especially. This one might be a little bit earlier than 1920s. I'm not entirely sure, but all these little compartments. Come hither. Broken mirror. Let me try and get this open without further breaking the mirror. For the record, I did not break it originally. It came to me like that. I'm just paranoid about making it worse. And it's got a money clip and this. It's gonna slide up. I'm not careful. But look! Ugh. I love little notes. Probably so, in case she lost it, it could be returned to her. Love to see it. Then we got this one that is uh, worse for wear. The chain is um, brokened. But someone's like <laughs> carved it really rudimentally. Is that the correct word? Miss Ramona. Rudimentary engravings. Mirror coin slots, and a little powder doodad. Mm. Pretty neato. I love it. It's pretty Art Nouveau. It's probably older than 1920s. This one's pretty neat because it's not metal. It's celluloid, which is a type of old plastic before, like, other plastics were invented. <laughs> but a mirror would have been there. And we got the rouge. Oh my god, okay. Powder. Not gonna rip it. And then the little pouch side. Ta-da! This one is another finger ring compact trying to enunciate. Very beautiful. It has been gutted, unfortunately. There's like nothing in there. But she's so beautiful to me. These last three were all made by the same company and they all look strikingly similar, especially on the outside. But there's this one. This one I got for two bucks, well technically three, but then I found a dollar bill behind the mirror. So like, you know, coin slots, rouge, powder, little compartment behind the mirror. Huzzah, huzzah. Then these two, ugh. These two I bought from the same vendor and they must have belonged to the same woman because the notes refer to the same woman and yes, they have notes inside. Let's get to that. So, rouge, powder, comb, note. I'm gonna gently unwrap it, unopen it. Open it? What? Okay, words are hard for me right now. Anyway. A favor, bleh, a favor at the Pi Gamma Delta Spring Party, May 9th, 1925. Mary Elizabeth Brandt was with Corwin Versal. At least I think that's what that says. And then this one. M-E-B for Mary Elizabeth Brandt. This one does not have a tassel like the last one. Once again, rouge, powder, comb, note. And this one makes me sob. To Mary Elizabeth Brandt. From Bob Welsh, when he left for California, September of 1924. I just want to know how, I just want to know their story. I want to know how this came to be. I want to know. 